Hi guys, welcome back again to this particular episode. In this particular platform, I go by lead. Now, is Christianity a sham? Now, we're going to listen shortly to a video that I'm going to patch up here where matters of religion are, you know, contested upon. And of course, it leaves people uh, and everybody else who just listen to it. And I feel like it's so interesting and again, so, uh, you know, the controversial to talk about matters that, or talk about issues that you've got no, you know, pre-text or information prior to. And I'm not going to say that I'm a master in this particular case here because I'm just as naive as plain as I put as you because you're going to listen together and then we're going to have our own judgment and our own conclusions at the end of it. But one thing that I need you to pay attention on is um, it should people you know question should we start questioning you know the authenticity of these is it a christianity is it a religion is it denominations or it is something else because even as this particular guy or the shortly going to patch it up here is going to talk about and um we're going to listen to him then of course at the end of it i'm going to come back again with more sentiments and more comments over the same but above all we need to pay attention to the sovereignty of the deity god now should god be a mystery or god should be a clear entity to humanity let's keep on watching and that and many more we come back at the end of it with more sentiments my ways, which is this. What was there at the start? We don't know. But I don't know and you don't know. But, can, but, can, but no human brain, unless you want to correct me, can actually comprehend nothingness, right? No, but it's, a, it's an, a fallacy to think that because I don't understand how it happened, therefore God did it. I mean, that's just weak. Well, no, I'm, I, OK, but I'm prepared to have an open mind about this. Yes. But somebody did. And I just have never met a human brain that can explain to me what happened before, say, you go for the Big Bang argument. Well, what was there before? What, what does nothing look like? Physicists are debating this. I'm not a physicist, but they're debating it. My point is that they don't know, and I don't know, and you don't know, and it doesn't help to postulate a god that did it. But you're certain it's not a god, and yet you admit you don't know. No, I'm, I'm certain that it doesn't help to postulate something very complicated at the outset, because what we've got is primeval simplicity, and from that stems everything. Mm. And what science does, it starts with simplicity, which is relatively easy to understand, and from that it develops into the whole of the universe and the whole of life. It doesn't help to start with complexity, and a creator has to be complex, whatever but else he is. The reason that I subscribe to the theory there must be a more powerful being out there than anything the human race has created is because, like I say, a human brain can't comprehend nothingness or what may have come before nothingness. We can't. We're not able to extrapolate what that is, right? I mean, no, no scientist can explain nothingness, can they? Plausibly. Well, well, maybe they can't. You'd have to talk to a physicist, but even... Could if, you explain it? No, quite not a physicist. But no, but you're case, a very smart guy, and you're I'm, a very vehement atheist. No, I'm not. I'm and not that vehement. Well, you're um, pretty vehement. I mean, you, you just think all belief in all gods is ludicrous, right? I think that it doesn't help to introduce complexity at the outset. That's my point. No, no, I, I get that, but... but no, well, you, I don't think you do get it. Well, no, I do, because I... But you're asking me to consider that my own belief in a, a deity that may be above human thinking and understanding and brain power that was there universally, that my theory is scientifically flawed, whereas I would throw back at you, OK, but I need to be given an alternative. I need some scientist somewhere to explain to me, right, four, four billion years, all right, but then what was there before that? Well, scientists can't answer that, and, they, and what they say is things like it's like going to the... It's like going north of the North Pole. Mm. I'm sure I gather you recently introduced Stephen Hawking. He probably said that to you. Yeah, um, he did actually, yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the point is this. Science can explain things starting with simplicity and working up to complexity. No, I get that, but where science can't explain something, i.e. in the case I just gave you, is it not possible that you're all wrong on the atheist of side of the argument? We could, we could be all wrong, but 
what and you what might if, get a shocking surprise one day well, when you're you no might, longer with us you, you might and you discover we were right all yeah, along it's possible <laughs> you can see it's possible it's highly unlikely um, <laughs> there, you don't know though do you no, of course i don't um scientists take a pride in admitting when, what they don't know mm. and they don't know what happened before the big bang they don't even admit that the, the word before means anything mm. with respect to the big bang yes. physicists will tell you but it has to i mean it just well it doesn't because that's a naive statement um physicists will say that that you do not have to say there was a, a time began in the big bang is what some physicists will say yeah, but to which i immediately respond with my basic human brain well okay if time began when did it begin well, quite. and what was there before quite which is a fairly obvious question it is a very obvious question it's too obvious and physicists will tell you that you're being naive Yeah, but they don't know why I'm being naive because they can't provide the any actual is, scientific evidence. As you've evidence. just said, the human brain is not capable of grasping these things. Right, that's my things. point. Yes. So why is it not possible that there is a superior being, power, which many people believe in, in different It's ways? It's possible there are fairies at the bottom of the garden. I mean, all sorts of things are possible. <laughs> and you, you, you can't deny that. Well, except I've never seen fairies in the garden. Have you? No, you've never seen God either. No, but you don't know for sure that either doesn't exist. No, I don't know that fairies don't exist. Fairies may well there may be leprechauns <laughs> for all I know. Do you accept have you got milder about this as you've got older? Yes. Have you got more accepting that there may be, you may be wrong? Less certain. Well, um uh, yes, of course, a, a scientist may always be wrong and, and it, that's a, definitely a thing that a scientist has to say. But I'm not vehement. You you're provoking me to be vehement because you're taking that tone with me. But, well, you've but, been provoked before. Yes. And you've been quite vehement in response. I, I'm actually not trying to provoke you. I'm genuinely curious. Yes. Because I don't have all the answers, but I'm always skeptical of people who think they do. I don't think you think you do. Absolutely not. But your admission that you don't have all the answers to me is quite interesting because it lends yeah. the possibility you might be wrong. Well, it's not interesting. I mean, no no scientist has all, all the answers. Mm. Um but but the one thing you shouldn't say is that, that because I don't know, therefore God did it. That's 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 What a do you think happens out. when you die? As Bertrand Russell said, I believe that when I die I shall rot and nothing of my ego shall remain. That's it. Yes. The end, nothing. There's nothing else. How could it how could it be otherwise? I mean you you have a brain, an evolved brain mm. which works by nerve impulses and when that decays, what could possibly be left? So you don't believe in for example a spirit or a soul. None of that is that's all conditional entirely on a link to a an actual cerebral yes if if by spirit or soul you mean something that outlasts the brain mm. then i do not believe in it no really well how could i well people have gone through weird sort of out of body near death experiences where they they've been pronounced dead for a few minutes they always talk about almost all of them talk about this weird yeah, there's a tunnel a tunnel of yeah. light at the end yeah so i mean yeah. it could be couldn't yes. it yes well read susan blackmore on that <laughs> would you like to be pleasantly surprised or would you be appalled if you were wrong uh well i would be Pleasantly surprised for a while. I don't think I'd like to live for all eternity. Would you? Would, would you get? I don't know. It depends what it's like. Well, mm. fraternity was watching, you know, cricket at Lords all day and watching Arsenal win every weekend. Yes, give me that. Really? Well, if eternity is is blissful and a wonderful I experience, as some, some people believe, I think there is something actually rather frightening about eternity, and I'm, I'd be quite glad to be spending it under a general anaesthetic. <laughs> Do you, do you fear that, given the finality of what you think death to be do you fear it as you get older I fear the process of dying but when you're dead you don't know anything it's just like before you were born I think it was Mark Twain said I was I was dead for billions of years before I was born and never suffered the smallest inconvenience <laughs> <laughs> But when when you have loved ones who've died for example that's tragic Yeah, but how how do as somebody who believes literally in the finality the the rotting of a body and that's it it must be worse than for somebody like me where i genuinely believe there's something better to come it, it's worse so what not so what just curious that it must be for you awful each time far yes. worse than it is for people who have a belief yes it is a lot of people take great comfort from their belief in god that there is a different life out there yes they do so you what? don't have that sucker no, at all no So is it, is it incredibly painful more more for you perhaps than somebody no, I don't think so. who is a believer let me put it to you this way if you really did believe it wouldn't you say to the person on the deathbed looking forward to seeing you in purgatory a lot of more well, a lot of people say looking forward to seeing you in another life yeah yes a lot of people say you, that you don't really believe it though actually i i do yeah i do actually 
Because I find it, when I think about it in big picture, which is your great thing, I think, how likely is it that we just got put on this planet, Earth, as human beings, as a one-off kind of entity that existed here, and then you die and that's it. And, we, and, and it only lasted four billion years, and before that was absolutely nothing at all. How likely is that to have been the case? I don't think that's likely. I my, my human brain, which is limited, does not think that is likely. I think it's very likely. I think really? It's exactly what happened, yes. Well, we are a tiny, tiny dot in the universe. Right? Exactly. We so, are tiny. so you don't know what else is out there, really, other than what scientists have already established? No, I, I think it's highly likely that there are other beings out there which mm. are much cleverer than we are, mm. um, superhuman, not supernatural, but superhuman, and I would love to meet them. I probably couldn't understand what they said. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. I want to come back and I want to talk to you about well, where, where we are in the world right now, which I think we can reach points of agreement here about the cancel culture, wokery, and what is doing the biology language project funded by scientists in the US and Canada produced a list of 24 harmful terms. These included male, female, man, woman, mother and father. They recommended using phrases like sperm producing, egg producing, XYXX individual. And they should be used to avoid reinforcing societally imposed ideas of a sex binary. To which your response was, the only possible response is contemptuous ridicule. Yes. Which I cheered, I have to say, because it was complete madness. How have we come to this? English is my native language, it's your native language. And um, I propose to use it in the way that I have always used it, and I'm not going to be censored by... Have you looked at those people? I mean, they, they look like teenagers. Well, it's just... What's extraordinary to me is they, they want to... what they call de-gender and neutralise language, but they're doing it from a completely false pretext that you can somehow pretend biology doesn't exist, particularly when it comes to someone's sex. I mean, it, it's incontrovertible. There's no scientific doubt about this, and yet a small group of people have been quite successful, actually, in reshaping vast swathes of the way society talks and is allowed to talk. It's bullying. Uh, and we've seen the, the way um, J.K. Rowling has been bullied, Kathleen yeah. Stock has been bullied. Um, they've stood up to it. But, but um, it's very upsetting the way this tiny minority of people has managed to capture the discourse and to um, really talk arrant nonsense. What's the answer to it? science. I mean, um, there are two sexes. Um, you can talk about gender if you wish, and that's a subjective... I'm not but when people say there are 100 genders, yeah, for example. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in that. As, as a biologist, there are two sexes, mm. uh, and that's all there is to it. You had a humanist award stripped in 2021 because of your comments about this kind of thing. Uh, you had a tweet in April of that year. In 2015, you tweeted, Rachel Dolezal, a white chapter president in America, the NA, NAACP, was vilified for identifying as black. She was white. Some men choose to identify as women, some women choose to identify as men. You'll be vilified if you deny that they are literally are what they identify as. Discuss. And all hell broke loose and you had your award stripped because you were effectively doing what J.K. Rowling and others have said, you were just espousing a biological fact. I wasn't even doing that. I was asking, asking people to discuss. Discuss. Mm. That's what I've done all my life in universities. Right. Why have we lost that ability to actually have an open and frank debate? There are people for whom the word discuss doesn't mean discuss. It means you've taken a position, mm. um, which I hadn't. Um, but anyway, um, I thought it was a reasonable thing to discuss. This mm. was, on, on the one hand, uh, I actually wrote a couple of follow-up articles to, it, to this. Um, race is actually a much more fluid concept than, than sex. Um, for one thing, many people are of mixed race, mm. so they really can be, um, you know... Well, I, I had my DNA done, for example, yes. uh, properly tested. It came back, I had zero English DNA. Zero. I actually have 6% Middle Eastern. Yes. <laughs> for example, yes. right? So that was a shock to me. I had no idea. Yes. Um, a lot of Celt, a lot of Irish and Scottish and Welsh. Yes. But no English whatsoever. Yes. Well, we're all mixed, and therefore it actually is a perfectly reasonable thing for somebody to, to identify as some particular race if they want to. But sex is not like that. 
sex really is binary. Mm. And therefore, um, it's, it's something, it's certainly worth discussing that odd anomaly, which I pointed out in that tweet. I mean, we now have a situation where in women's sport, for example, transgender athletes are destroying women's records uh, and beating women in women's sport, you know, yeah. We, by immeasurable distances. We, we don't disagree about this. There's no... <laughs> no. But we don't, right. Uh, yeah. um, I mean, it, it seems to me complete madness, just yeah. scientific madness it that is. we're allowing this yeah. to happen. It is. One of the problems that scientists have, and we saw this in the COVID pandemic, is that scientists, by definition, they evolve positions according to changing facts. And we saw in the pandemic that originally the perceived scientific wisdom was that masks, for example, would be ineffective in preventing the spread of COVID. Then they changed their mind about that. We were told that the vaccines would stop passing on the virus, and it turned out that wasn't true. Uh, we were told, there's been a whole debate, as you know, about where the virus may have started. The belief was from a wet market. It may be it was from this lab in Wuhan and so on. Those who are anti-science, they leap on these things and they say, well, there you go. There you go. Why should we believe or follow the science when they do such dramatic U-turns in a health crisis, for example? What do you yeah. say to that? Well, uh, it, it's true. I mean, science uh, actually does change its mind because mm. when, I mean, I think it was John Maynard Keynes said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What mm. do you do, sir? Yes. Um, and so this, was, this all happened in such a hurry. It was all a great rush to, to produce advice and there wasn't time to take the normal balanced look at the evidence and so naturally um, they change their mind mm. um, and it's a virtue of science actually that, that they can change their mind scientists can change their mind. what is not a virtue is that social media allows large groups of people to whip each up uh, each other up into a sort of lava yes. of self-righteous certainty yes, about positions which can actually, in a pandemic, for example, be deadly to people. I quite agree. I mean, if the wrong types of people who are most vulnerable to, say, a COVID virus, if they believe... Right, all right, all right, welcome back. Again, I promise you that at the end of it, I'll be back. But of course, it's not the end of it. The video just goes on, goes on, goes on. But there's one thing that I wanted to make clear. The first part of it, the first part of, you know, the questioning, uh, Dawkins didn't really exactly give a full impression of what he thinks that if there is any superior existence out there but uh, of course working with you know doubt working with the um, projections as far as you see uh, how far he could go as far as his thinking and his intellectual you know capacity can take him now th that leaves uh, you know the whole thing in uh, in limbo but that it's not even clear whether um, there is a deity, a deity rather out there, that we should uh, maybe uh, like literally looking forward to. But then there's something that, uh, you know, uh, you manage to hold on to. That is the aspect of faith. You know, so if I, even right now as I'm talking to you, I feel guilty a little bit of, you know, questioning because I look like the odd one out. Why don't you just have to look like the rest? I mean, like, behave and act and have the faith. And But again, in as much, in as, much as yes, of course, one can think on the other end. One cannot afford not to think what is on the other end. Hmm? What is on the other end? Uh, as far as you see, of uh, the religion and uh, the whole aspect of you know uh, christian or religion not necessarily because if i bring christianity here i'm going to be more of a, a specific specific rather but uh, do you think that is now leaving us into this particular limbo do you think that uh, matters to do with the religion have to be questioned you know or we just take what everybody tells us to take that they think that there may be they have a little enlightenment uh, as far as you know religion goes by and uh, what about you uh, would you be able even to question would you feel a little bit you know uh, pulled back or like hey i'm gonna step it back i'm not gonna give it a maybe a strong stance asking such kind of a question you look like you're out of order now i, I do not know but uh, 
I also stand corrected, guys. Help me find out what exactly you think. Do drop me your comments on the comment section. What do you think of religion? Now, even as you know, Dawkins couldn't put it clear the first part of you know the whole interview before we get to the second part of um, uh, sex and race and biology. Um, the first part of it didn't come out clear to me and that's the reason why I had to pose at this particular point and then we say something small about it. So as we are saying something small about it, I also expect you to, you know, uh, let me know. Let me know what, what you think. Have you maybe somehow along the line in your life because of this particular life being bombarded with such kind of questions that you cannot confront openly? But you know, maybe internally they are eating you up like, where are we? Where are we going? Uh, is there any all-knowing being out there that is all aware of everything that is happening around you know that is something that let's just share on the platform and uh, let's get to know uh, what exactly you think again i go by lead to this particular platform you stay put for the next upload